I want to take you on a different trip than you're expecting, and I hope to give you ideas about how you can, where to look and where to find your own Zipcar companies and things like that. Thanks to the internet, we have a brand new organizational structure that's possible. This new paradigm completely transforms how we do business and how we do work. And I call this Peers Incorporated. It's a partnership between autonomous individuals and institutions, and together, these two together, are going to drive the new sustainable collaborative economy moving from the industrial economy where we are today. So it was through Zipcar that I really understood what was going on, and, and, under, and now today, looking back, I'll tell you it formed the th had the three key building blocks of what it is to create a peers incorporated company. The first is excess capacity. One of the reasons Zipcar succeeded is because the way, the olden days, the way you would consume cars, is you have two choices. One, you buy the entire giant car and you own it, and you therefore are spending $9,000 a year to own and maintain that, and I'm sure you guys don't think it's true, but it is. <laughs> U.S. household surveys they tell us that. Or your choice was you could buy, you could use a rental car, and you got it in these 24-hour bundles. So the theory was you would use your car all the time. In fact, people drive it less than two hours a day, so it's idle 95% of the time or you get it in these 24-hour bundles, whether you're going to drive for two or 26. So it was this sheer, the economics of this excess capacity that made an opening for someone like Zipcar to get in, because we, in fact, consume in this kind of smooth curve, and there we were. We had to buy it like that. The second thing is that Zipcar made a platform for participation. We've made it really simple and easy to be able to rent a car just for an hour or just for a day. That it was technology that made it possible to have 10 different people on, in one day use the same car. It was technology that made us be able to make those transactions really fast. You didn't have to go stand in a long line, give your license again, all that stuff. And then the third piece was that we, we, use, we, we thought of our members as co-creators, as collaborators. If you think of a car rental model, those guys are on that side, the consumers are on that side, and we, the company, are on this side. And we brought people inside to our side of the counter. We trusted them to do the walk around themselves. We trusted them to choose a very specific car that was next to their house to do that transaction themselves. And they were the ones to fill it up. And there was a lot of trust, and we did a lot of iterating. If you've been to other lectures, we talks here, we talk about iterating and doing the minimum viable product. So people were really on the inside with us. And um, these two pictures just kind of demonstrate for me, um, I have three children, and this cup, this, um, both of these companies, both of these couples, um, they are ha leaving the hospital with their firstborn. And the idea is, hey, let's take a photo and send it to Zipcar. Because we were like family. We were like, send us a photo because you are one of us. We are co-creators, we are collaborators. And if we look at the last, I founded Zipcar in 2000, and if we think of where we are today in 2013, this idea of people not being consumers, but we're producers, we're collaborators, we're co-creators. Um, I ran across this cartoon recently, and maybe in the back, I don't know if you can read it, it's a Moses coming down from the mountain, and it says, is there a section at the bottom for comments? <laughs> really? That's how we work it today. So these three, the three building blocks of a Peers Incorporated company, peer collaborators, platform for participation, all on excess capacity. Um, so I want to give you, uh, here are these companies that we know and we talk about and we love, and in fact, did you realize that these are peers incorporated companies? These companies built platforms for participation and it was through this excess capacity of my stuff, my friends, my videos, my knowledge, my photos, that these companies exist. It's our excess capacity going on the platform for participation that makes them fabulous. So I wanted to look, you know, what is going on here? Let's look a little deeper. And my favorite example, um, since I'm big on sharing, is I want to talk about bed sharing. Got that? <laughs> bed sharing? So when I come to a new city like Atlanta, if I'm lucky, I have a friend I can stay at their house. Um, and I might be in this nice room, and if I'm even luckier, I get a double bed to myself. And if I'm less lucky, I will be in the teenager's room, and that's, you know, not so good. And this is why we invented hotels. Hotels are, in fact, bed sharing.
So if you think about hotels, I went online and I said, okay, what is the biggest bed sharing company in the world? And it turns out that it's the Intercontinental Hotel Group. And after 60 years, they had 650,000 beds in 100 countries. And just remember the effort that that took. You know, you had to say, I want to build a hotel in Atlanta. I've got to go find the place. I've got to get the money. I've got to get the architect. I've got to actually finance it. I've got to then hire the people. I've got to put in the beds. And then maybe or not, it's going to succeed. It's like a giant effort. So, in fact, some of you will get the next moment. Um, Airbnb, which is a company where you put your own excess capacity, my second house, my guest bedroom, online, and people can rent it and pay money for it. In four years, 650,000 rooms in 192 countries. So this is where I go, wow, this is transforming, incredible. We have not seen things like this before. This is phenomenal, what is happening here, and this really changes everything. And in fact, there's another company called Couchsurfing that does the same thing, but no money is transacted. And in Couchsurfing's first nine years, two and a half million beds are up to be shared. This is truly game-changing, breaks everything that you ever thought about. Um, so what is going on here? Like, I, so I want to look at a little bit what's going on. If we think about the industrial way of doing things, you had to make big, large investments. These are things that industrial, industrialization is really good at. Big investments, multi-year efforts, lots of different kinds of intelligence. You have make standards and use standardized ways of doing things. Things are very consistent. You wrap it all up in a kind of brand promise, and they're typically global. These are things that individuals can't do. But it turns out there's all these things that individuals can do that are incredibly expensive for companies to do. That would be localization, customization, specialization. All that is a pain in the neck for companies. Access to my social networks. Everyone wants in. I know my own friends and fam friends. It's easy for me to get in those things. So if we put these two things together, it turns out that there's really this incredible relationship that now that we can combine the best of both parties. And this is what I call Peers Incorporated. Because of the internet, because of technology, we can combine the best of both worlds. So how companies and institutions and governments get in is they build a platform for participation, and when you have, and what do the peers provide? They provide this incredible diversity of offering. And I'm going to go down these two tracks and show you what, what happens when you do that. Oh, and I also want to get, I want to say, if you look at this, it's really this symbiotic, complementary relationship. They really are intertwined and work together, and now to get incredibly groovy, all swimming in a sea of excess capacity. It's this type of, it's excess capacity because it's getting stuff out of individuals and their stuff or uh, small companies that you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can get just little pieces of it. So, the um, incorporated side. When you build a platform for participation and when you get it right, and it is really hard to get it right, when you get it right, it mandatorily gives you scale, economies of scale and high growth because you, it's everyone all at once can come on the platform. You don't have to do things serially like they used to do with hotels. So look at these um, curves here. This is Airbnb. I have to keep swapping out their growth curve. Um, this is Blabla Car, which is um, the largest car sharing company in France. If three excess capacity seats around you and you share that ride. And today they transport two by month 2,500 high-speed rail trains and all those passengers without building a laying a track or putting a car. Here is Fiverr. What would you do for $5? Um, they're just a three, three years old. You should go look at them. Two and a half million gigs, they call them. Um, this is Etsy, a marketplace of individual stuff that individuals make or curate. It had, this last year has had a billion dollars worth of sales. It's not just simple and easy things. Top Coder is a design and um, engineering firm, and they, you can see their, um, their growth. And apps. If you think of your smartphone, that was an excess capacity. You bought the one device for your one killer app, and then it became open-ish. And all of those developers have put their apps and their best ideas on top. And you can see in, uh, two, in the four years, one and a half million apps have been made for phones. No company could ever pull that off. So I want to talk a little bit, just point out this idea of excess capacity. We are now really repurposing and reusing and finding out and digging out the value in each one of these things. When you make it open, I can ha find innovation all around the world and not just what's my guys inside my company because people are iterating on this model. 
and it's very, very cost effective. So now let's look at what the peers bring. Peers bring this amazing, amazing diversity. And because of this diversity, each one of them is being very creative and doing things their own way. So there's a lot of really great stuff that happens. And of course, nothing is too big to fail. You have this incredible resilience and redundancy. So the company I started in France is called Buzzcar, and it's peer to peer car sharing. You can rent your own car out to your friends and neighbors. We, the company, build the platform, which makes it easy to rent and uh, do the, handle the insurance. But look at the diversity of our car owners and their cars. So you can find it's very different from what Zipcar looks like. Um, these are different price points, different types of cars, different locations. Did you guys see that? I went too quickly. just want to go back. No, never mind. Um, there he is. Um, <laughs> these guys mail this in. So you can see that you can have different kinds of cars. Uh, and I want to keep going quickly through this. Cool guys, less cool guys. Um, <laughs> hipster guys, proud guys. Um, so you can see, next slide. So the diversity is phenomenal. So I talked about the iPhones, the smartphones, the diversity of innovation that is going on there. And the whole open data movement, which we don't have time to talk about today, that is an, another example of a platform for participation and what can you make of it. So I've told you really, really good stories. I'm now going to make you cry over the next two minutes. Get ready. It's going to be very, very bad. Meanwhile, back at the ranch on the planet that we live in, things for on climate change are really looking bad. This is a report put out by the uh, World Bank, a very conservative financial institution. Um, this report that was, just came out last uh, November, says, if every country does everything they promised to do, by 2100, we will have global average temperature increases of plus 7 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 4 degrees Celsius. What in heck is 7 degrees Fahrenheit average? Like, I don't know. So I went and I looked, and I said, what was it like when it was 7 degrees minus? When it was minus 7 degrees, it was the little uh, last ice age. We were under t where we're standing today was under kilometers of ice. That was 35,000 years ago in the past. We're doing that forward plus 7 degrees Fahrenheit in less than 100 years. Just imagine that difference going forward. Sadly, when I was looking at this report, when we talk about global average temperatures, that's duh, global average. And over land, duh, it's more hot. So where we live today is going to be an average of plus 11 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we don't do what we've promised to do, it's that by 2060. I've read in many places that humans do not coexist in temperatures of plus 7 degrees Fahrenheit. The last time we were plus 7 degrees Fahrenheit was 20 million years ago, and there were no humans. So I am really very, very serious about what's going on here. So while we're depressed, Three things every one of you guys can do is you can role model in your daily life, your actions and your purchases, you can lead in your business world, and you can take action on politics. And then I want to circle round. My friend Benny Banerjee at Stanford said, you can't solve exponential problems with linear solutions. And that's what we've been doing. And that is why I'm telling you, try Peers Incorporated. For me, it is honestly my incredible, incredible optimism. Everything that I told you about is delivered is how we can solve this in 20 years. We need to build platforms for participation. We know when we get the things right, when we figure out how to make people adopt energy solutions, change their behaviors, all these sustainable products, it can happen really, really fast. Remember those curves. We know that we need to have things, a lot of innovation. Peers Incorporated delivers the speed of collective action and preserves individual and local ingenuity and creativity. So it gives us the best of every single thing. So I am actually pretty optimistic. Can you believe it? Um, so I think that transportation is the center of the universe. I've been working in this field for about 13 years now. And every single thing you do, all of your opportunities are based on whether, in fact, you can get to that place. Um, but there's a lot of other really impressing world problems. And I urge you guys to pick your favorite one and start working on it. Um, all of these have peers incorporated structures that are coming out, um, the massively online coursework among them. You know, there's just a ton of these. So here, Richard Branson, to leave you with some great words. I, I'm so amused by him. Um, climate change is the biggest wealth-creating opportunity of our generation. So if you weren't persuaded before, 
You can make a lot of money at this. Go. <laughs> um, and a, a colleague of mine named Tim DeChristopher, I just was listening to, a talk, listening to him uh, last week, and he had this great sentence that I had to throw in here. What we absolutely know is that the pace of change is phenomenal right now. And so we are on track for such rapid and intense change, we might as well steer, steer towards the world we want to see. And that is what I'm trying to do, and that's what I urge you guys to do. And this next slide, I feel like I want you guys all to say together with me. Together we can, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> 